advice on remodeling your homes, your kitchens, your bathrooms, and in today's video here, we're going to show you how to install a dishwasher here the correct way. We're going to show you how to wire it, how to handle all the plumbing and the tubes and everything, and we're going to show you how to do it to all of the proper plumbing codes, which a lot of people do it the wrong way. So join us today and hopefully you'll learn a lot and it all starts right now. Okay, so I prefer to lay the dishwasher down on its back. That's the safest place for it. And I spread it out over a big mover's cloth here. That's why the floor is protected. Everything is protected here. Because we're going to be doing some electrical and pre-plumbing work here at the beginning and concentrating on this area up here in the upper right here. And so you want to be able to get right at it. So the first thing we have to do is remove this black shield here on the top. Okay, so here's where we're going to be concentrating our efforts. Right here on this piece here, that's where the water supply line is going to end up at. And then over here under this label here, this is where we're going to connect up the power cord okay so there's a nut right over here that we just need to loosen here that's it so that's a quarter of an inch nut okay so now we pull the lid up here and that exposes the internal wiring here that we're going to wire up here okay now you can't just have wire come into a sharp metal hole like this it's against building codes so what you're supposed to do is put one of these connectors in here. It's like a little clamp here and then we'll pass the wires through here and that will protect it from getting cut from that sharp edge here. Okay, so here you can see we tapped it into place and we're just running the cables up through it now. Once you have enough of your wiring up and through here, you can then tighten these down, these two screws down with a Phillips head and that's what clamps it into place and gives it a strain relief. Okay, now for the green ground line here, you just run it under the bracket there and tighten down the screw. Okay, so he's tightened down now. And if you don't have that little round bracket there around the green screw, then all you do is you take the wire there and wrap it clockwise around the green screw and then tighten down the screw. Make sure that the wire is wrapped around underneath the screw so that when you screw it down, it's on top of the wire. Okay, so now you just twist the wires together there, the white with the white and the black with the black. Then we twist on the wiring nut. Okay, now with all of the wires tucked safely out of the way, we just put the lid back on and we'll screw it back down. Okay, so we've got the screw right there alright since we were smart enough to buy this universal connector kit ahead of time you can see it already comes with the water hose and it comes with the right angle part here that we need okay so here's your right angle piece here and you want to make sure that he's got his washer in there because it needs that washer Otherwise, it won't be a watertight seal because this is a compression fitting and you'll have leaks. This here is one side of the 3 eighths of an inch end of the hose here. See how it's got the black gasket in there? So you want to make sure it has that. And then you're going to screw it onto the 90 degree piece here. And you want to make sure you don't use Teflon tape. You're not allowed to use Teflon tape here. I know a lot of people think that they need to, they think you're supposed to, but you're not here because this is a compression fitting with the gaskets. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And we'll, you hand tighten it first to make sure you don't strip it. And then once it's hand tightened, we'll come back with our wrench and we'll tighten that about a half a turn. Okay, so what you do here then is you take the rigid one-stop wrench here. And I love this wrench here because the, this is such a great set. It's made for plumbers, right? And the 3 8 inch side here, this little guy here, the little wrench will tighten this 3 8 inch side. You just go a half a turn past hand tighten with this, see? 
Now we're going to attach the 90 degree piece here right onto the inlet. As we hand tighten this, you can see the orientation that it has to be. It has to go straight out towards the back of the dishwasher there. Okay, so now that we have this hand tightened and we're sure that we haven't stripped anything, now we can take a pair of channel locks here and just tighten this a half a turn. So then you just come in here and tighten it a half a turn. And remember, no Teflon tape here unless your manufacturer specifically states to add it. Okay, so now for connecting up the drain hose, we have the green clamp on here. And then we have to connect the hose right into here, is where it connects to. And then we'll move the green clamp over the black rubber piece there. And that will make sure that it, they're both held in nice and tight. So you see how you got ribbed connections right here? See how they're, they're sort of shaped and ribbed there? You want to make sure those push deep in as far as you can get them into this black rubber piece here. Okay, so we have the spring on there now. Alright, so there's all of our hoses and our electrical cable here going into the cabinet. Now some people like to tape these down to the floor first so that they don't move, but that's fine. I usually don't. So what we did at the bottom here was we just drilled a single one and a half inch hole even though usually if you look at your installation instructions they'll tell you that you can put three different holes but due to the architecture of this particular cabinet it's five inches off the ground and you've basically got about an inch above the floor of this cabinet to get a hole going otherwise you're going to miss the clearance on the underside of the dishwasher next to it so that's that's usually a dilemma that you have to deal with okay so here's the problem this is the only area that you can drill holes to pass it through the side of the the cabinet there right so you have to stay away from this little two inch area that doesn't really give you much space to the back wall uh, so we have to aim for this area right here so it's a maximum of six and a quarter inches high that we have to be off the floor so we ran them all three through the same one uh, I, actually I believe this was a one and three quarter inch hole that we ran here this is a one and three quarter inch hole that we drilled here for this Okay, so the green one there, there's our power cable. There goes our, our drain hose there, and that has to go all the way up to the top of the countertop and turn around and come back down to the garbage disposal here. So this is the mistake that we find that a lot of installers screw up, even the ones from the big box stores, the professionals that you hire. So this is what they do a lot. They'll come in, I'm going to exaggerate this, but this is what they do. It comes in from the floor like this, and they go like this, and they come up to the garbage disposal. That is a violation of code. What you're supposed to do is have it go all the way up to, and if you can attach it to the bottom of your cabinet, the countertop there, all the better. Here we've got granite, so we can't, so sometimes what we do is we'll put a few straps screwed into the side of the cabinet. So if you look here where the drain requirements are for, in the instructions, they'll always tell you right here, Connect the drain hose, and you want it to be above the drain trap, and at least 20 inches minimum off the floor. It is recommended that the drain hose be looped up and securely fastened to the underside of the counter or be connected to an air gap. So this is what we call a high loop. And when you go to sell your house, and the buyer's inspector comes, and if he doesn't see this high loop here, and then coming down at an angle like that, they'll flag it in the report, and you won't be able to sell your house until you get that fixed. Other states like Wisconsin, for example, there's only a few states that have this rule, but they require an air gap above the counter, which is really ugly. They'll, it'll be something that kind of sticks out about as high as the sprayer here, up on the counter there, and it, it just adds one more ugly thing, one more ugly protrusion up above your, your counter there. But for the rest of us, we're able to get by with just making sure that we're as high as the, the countertop and then coming down at an angle to the garbage disposal. You always want this drain hose right here to come down to your garbage disposal, not up to it. So I want you to go and check yours right now and see what yours is. And I'm, I'm going to willing to bet here that 90% of you have yours coming up from the floor of the cabinet and going to the garbage disposal and that is a violation of plumbing code you have a lot of unqualified professionals out there doing this and it's not rocket science 
they tell you to do it in the installation manuals. So these are people that don't even know how to read the installation manuals. Okay, so you can see we have the dishwasher replaced, but what you have to do now is we want to make sure that it's level and that it's set at the right height. So you see this gap along the top here? That's probably about three quarters of an inch gap. We need to get that down to about a quarter of an inch, which means that the bottom has got to come up a bit. And that makes sense because if you look at how it's lined up with the bottom of the cabinets there, see how it looks like it's pushed in a half inch too much, but yet as you come up to the top here, it's actually protruding a little bit. So we need to true it up. It's called truing it where it's going to be perfectly vertical. And they want you to get it so that the door is flush with the cabinet doors next to it here. So we're going to do that by adjusting the legs here at the bottom here. So we can just set it manually at first by holding up the dishwasher here a little bit and then we'll loosen it by hand a little bit here to get it up a little more. And then to finish off near the top, we can, we'll put in our, we have a special uh, Milwaukee wrench that we like to use, our motorized ratcheting wrench with a socket that will go in the top of that screw there and we can spin it the rest of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to take my hand here and press it and watch what happens. See, I close up that gap up top so I get it to about a quarter of an inch or so. And now I'm going to reach back down here to the floor and right here where the leg is is where I'm going to loosen it with my hand. It's a little hard to get to here. And we just loosen it down to the point where the leg meets the floor there. And when it does, then we're pretty close. And then we'll adjust it a little more later. Like that, and like that. Okay, need to get a 3 16 inch. There we go. Take that out. All right, so good. This is my Milwaukee cordless three inch ratchet, and I love this thing. You see what it does here? So what I'm going to do is here is I'm putting a 3 16 inch socket onto this here and this will enable me to go down to the bottom of the feet there on the dishwasher and this goes onto the top of the bolt to adjust the height of the feet to fine tune it because it gets really hard um, to tighten it by hand. You have to use a wrench at this point and this has been my favorite method. Okay so here's how we use the wrench here the ratchet. We stick it up and above and you find the top of the bolt. Once you find the top of the bolt, so you can start spinning it there. You could also do it with a regular wrench, but the regular wrench just takes way too many revolutions of going in and trying to turn it a, a hundredth of a turn and then pulling out the wrench again and starting over, whereas this does a much better job. Okay, so as we check the plumb here, you can see we're almost there. It looks like it just needs to go a little bit more out like this, which means we have to go back and crank the leg up a little bit more. Here we go. So we'll do it a little more here. And we'll see if that's enough. Okay, so now we have the spirit level back on the front there. And let's see what it says here. So we're pretty much right smack dab in the middle if you look at that lower bubble right there. So now we are completely true, which makes sense because if you look at the front, you can see how it lines up with the cabinet here. There's, there's no more crooked leaning door that we saw before. And now up at the top, we're within a quarter of an inch of the top, which is about where we like to be. Okay, so another optional method that you can use to adjust the leg heights here is, you know, with just a regular ratchet here with the 3 16 inch socket and you would just put it right up top there and adjust it like that accordingly. Okay, now to measure horizontal level of your dishwasher, each manufacturer is different so you'll need to check your installation guide, but most of them will either tell you to put it right here at the bottom of the door and it's level there, or to stick it right here on the bottom right there and it's level there. So I have the best of both worlds. Then we take our level here and I like to put it right across the front of the cabinet here and make sure that we're flush with the front of the cabinet here all the way across the, the dishwasher here. Now it does concave in the middle. We can't help that. That's the way they made the, the lid on this thing, you know, the front cover. But at least if you from the left over here, it's giving us a nice even flush line right across here. That's what really matters. Now for mounting the, the dishwasher to the cabinet, 
Uh, we have a grain of counter, so we can't use this method, but I'm going to show you the method which is most common that you folks are going to use if you have a wood countertop here. And that is you'll take this bracket that they supply you with here, and there's a slot right here. So we're going to stick this bracket into that slot there, like this, and slide it over to the right a little, so now that it's locked in place. And then this tab that's in the back, if we want to come over here and take a closer look at the tab, so we have this little tab right here in the back. This one right here will get bent up with a pair of pliers and it'll stay in place. And then you'll see now you have three holes right here to choose from to run your screw up into the bottom side of the cabinet once you push the dishwasher in place. Now we don't know which one's going to be the right one yet, so it's not until you get it all pushed in place and you're happy with the front of the door being aligned with the front door of the cabinets there, then you'll decide which hole to use here. Most likely for most of you it's going to be this first hole here and if this is the one you use you'll use your pliers and snap this piece off right here. It breaks off along that score line right there and you'll do the same thing on the other side over here where there is another bracket hole way over here see. So there's two brackets that they give you and this is an important step. This is why I'm spending so much time warning you about this. This is required by building codes because your your dishwasher can bounce and move around all over the place if you don't tie this in. And I can't tell you how many times in the past I've seen where we've had people from Home Depot or Lowe's come in and do installations and they screw it up. They don't screw this to the to the counter and it gets picked up when you go to sell your place and the buyer's agent comes in and does an, a home inspection and points this out and puts it on your list and now you're screwed. You have to fix it. It, it lands in your lap to fix when you paid somebody to do the job right in the first place. So this is why I don't allow Home Depot or Lowe's to come in and do any of our installs anymore. We do all of them ourselves now because this way we know it's going to be done right. Since we're doing the granite and stone types of countertops, what we have to do now, since we don't have any way to attach it there, is we have to use the side method. So what we're going to do here is the same bracket would go in the side here and you just load it into the slot there and use the same principle with the pliers and twist the tab so it locks into place. Now when we slide in the dishwasher to the final resting place we'll decide which of these three holes right here is going to be the one that we use for the screw. Most likely this first one and if that's the case we'll run our number 10 screw through it and into the side of the cabinet there and break off the tab. Now we do have to drill a pilot hole into that side cabinet to avoid breaking the wood. You don't want to split the wood there when you start screwing in the screw. Never screw a screw into the side of a cabinet wall there without drilling a pilot hole. Okay, so now that the dishwasher is fully lined up here, so you can see here on the side where our tab is right there. So it looks like we're going to take that middle hole and drill a 16th inch pilot because this is really the only spot here where you can drill a screw right into the edge of the cabinet. Spot here right along the edge of the cabinet wall is the only place where we can put a screw. Okay so here's our pilot bit here and we're just going to drill a little bit in there. You don't want to go too far. So we just went in a quarter of an inch to accommodate that half inch number 10 screw that they're giving us. Okay, now here on the other side of the machine, we were able to get the screw in over here because we're coming in off of an angled cabinet, so we were able to get that screw hole there, and we'll just break this off with the pliers. There we go. Okay, do one final check there on the alignment. There it is, nice and perfectly plumb here. We'll check the other side too. Nice and plumb there as well. Okay, so pull all of your paper tags and everything out of here, all the styrofoam, any other parts that don't belong. And you can also peel off your film. 
And I tell people, leave it all on there if you're selling your property. If you're remodeling your kitchen, you know, to sell it, you know, you do this, you tape this on there. That way when people walk in to look at your property, they'll know that they're moving into a brand new house with all brand new appliances. And that helps, I think, uh, psychologically, it helps them want to pay more for your property because they know that they're the first people to use these appliances. To check the tensioning of the spring, you want to make sure that the door doesn't just drop out of your hand. It's supposed to be where you push it down like that and it stays down. And same with closing the door, it should just close smoothly. And if it doesn't, you'll have to play with the tensioning on the spring. But I can tell you in my entire life, I have not come across one brand new dishwasher that needed any adjustment on the door springs. They just set them at the factory and they're usually pretty good at it. Okay. Okay, so now I just come in here and tighten it with my rigid one-stop wrench here so I'll just slide it right up here and what I do is I usually tighten it about a half a turn about a half turn past tighten is really all you need for that okay now we'll turn on the water supply now both the hot water to the faucet and the hot water going to the dishwasher are now both turned on and you just Check for any leaks. Okay, so we're just going to run a test cycle now. I brought in a dirty dish from home and we're going to get it going. Okay, so now while the cycle is running, you want to keep looking underneath the dishwasher here for any potential leaks. Okay, so particularly right here where we connected up the the water supply hose, that's a, a, a point that you want to look at. And just make sure you don't see anything anywhere else there. So way back underneath, which you probably can't see, but back there is where we connected the drain hose to the other hose there. So you want to check there as well. I'd like to put a piece of paper towel down underneath there to make sure if there's any water droplets, it will let you know. But you also want to check right here where the drain hose comes in and connects to the garbage disposal because several times during your cycle here, it's going to empty out water into there and down the drain. And you want to make sure that you don't have a leak here in this spot. And then of course we connected the hose right here. The drain hose goes right onto the side arm of the garbage disposal. And we use the red spring that they supply in the bag with the dishwasher here. And then another thing is always make sure, and we see people do this all the time, they forget to do this. There's a plug inside here on the garbage disposal inside this tube here. You're supposed to hit it out with a screwdriver and a hammer and bang it out. Otherwise, the water will not go in because by default from the factory, the brand new garbage disposals have a plug here so that water can't go in or out of it. And so you need to remove that plug first. And if you don't, what's going to happen is all of this water will back up back into your dishwasher. And guess what, folks? You're going to have a flood in the bottom of your dishwasher. I just... See, I like to use these three quarter inch conduit clamps and we figure out where we want to screw it in up here along the wall there. See, a couple of hours later, the cycle is completed and let's check it out. And it looks like our filthy dish here passed the test. So our bowls up top got water and they got clean, so everything's looking good here. No flood in the dishwasher. And we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up below that tells us that you like us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and click on the bell icon. That will tell you every time we get a video uploaded. And we hope you enjoyed this one and we will see you next time.